Every year, the experts at U.S. News & World Report rank the nation's best hospitals. They've recognized St. Vincent as the number one hospital in Arkansas and listed eight clinical areas as high-performing specialties. The next closest Arkansas hospital only had three. This recognition is due to the unwavering commitment of our world-class physicians, dedicated nurses, and associates who have now made St. Vincent the state's number one hospital. Good morning, Arkansas. Dr. Theramal Dubaka of the Longevity Center at St. Vincent joins us today with tips for maintaining your workout and staying safe from the heat. Dr. Dubaka, thanks so much for being here this morning. This is certainly timely. Boy, is it hot out there. Those humidity levels are up. And I mentioned earlier, it feels hard, difficult just to walk in and out of stores or in and out of your home, much less do a workout outside. Exactly. Good morning to your viewers and good morning, Allison. I'm so glad to be here to talk about this very timely topic this morning. Uh, it is so true, the humidity is going up, the temperatures are going up. It's, uh, it's time to talk about some heat illnesses. Let's talk and about the, ra yeah, the range of heat illnesses because there's a lot. There's not just heat stroke or right. heat cramps. There's several different. We've all uh, kind of uh, seen the news stories about the heat waves and how people die from heat strokes, but the heat illnesses can range uh, a spectrum from the very mild heat cramps to the heat stroke, like I said, and uh, the severity of illness as it goes to the heat exhaustion and heat stroke uh, is so bad that you'll need uh, a lot of medical attention at the extreme end. And heat cramps is characterized by uh, what we call cramps in the legs, the spasms mm -hmm. in the legs, uh, in, the, in its very mildest form, and uh, the heat exhaustion is the point where the body is trying to maintain its temperature by, uh, you, you might see symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and uh, there, there's a lot of perspiration, uh, obviously, with the heat exhaustion because the body is still trying to cool it off. Gotcha. But when it goes to the other extreme, at the heat stroke, the temperatures are usually, we're talking about the core temperatures of the body uh, over three, 103, 104 Fahrenheit. And uh, at that time, the body is shutting down. It's think of an air conditioner that's trying to cool your home, but it's broken down now and the temperatures are just rising. So you'll uh, even start seeing uh, confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, loss of consciousness and uh, uh, like I said the temperatures uh, body temperature itself is going to be extremely high. There's a couple of others that we listed there that people may not have heard of before heat edema yes. and heat syneco or synco syncope. Yes a heat edema is uh, the retention of the fluid especially in people with heart conditions uh, okay. congestive heart failure uh -huh. ischemic heart disease uh, what, what we call coronary artery disease uh, what happens is the body starts retaining fluid uh, uh, as it uh, it's getting dehydrated on one hand but it is also uh, trying to be the heat by vasodilation. What it is is it's opening up the blood vessels to the skin, trying to uh, uh, evaporate all that heat off, and uh, that leads to heat edema. And heat syncope is uh, near fainting, fainting uh, because of the heat uh, extremes. Certainly something to be aware of if you're around others too, because many times we're working outside or working out mm -hmm. outside with other people, so it's up to us to help recognize those Exactly. Symptoms. I mean, public awareness is extremely important uh, uh, in these kind of weather situations, and uh, knowing the facts, knowing what to look for, you might be a very helpful resource out in the community among a bunch of people. Let's talk about if you think you are suffering from some sort of heat cramps uh, or, or further on down the line, heat sure. exhaustion. What should we do first? Very first step uh, is uh, dehi dehydration is the most important problem, as uh, we've spoken again. Uh, be the dehydration. Uh, drink plenty of fluids, not just the fluids, there's going to be a loss of electrolytes uh, mm -hmm. with the sweating, so you want to get those, uh, your exposed drinks which have electrolytes mixed in. Uh, if it's mild exercise, maybe water is just fine, but if you're pushing the limits, you might have to get that exposed drink in with all the electrolytes in it. And, uh, and also, if uh, you do notice a person suffering heat, uh, exhaustion rather because heat stroke you got to call the 911 get them into the ER and that'll be very obvious exactly at, at you're, you're gonna have the person passed out right uh, the person's not gonna start making sense of being very confused but on the heat other end heat exhaustion which is a milder form uh, you, you the first step is to have them lay down because mm -hmm. you want to improve the circulation blood to the brain and uh, maybe a cool fan while there uh, you sprinkle some water to get the evaporative effect started and, uh, and you know, just making sure uh, you, you get them into air conditioning space as soon as possible. Don't be afraid to go inside. I think a lot of times people want to push themselves yes. as they're working out and they think, I just need to work a little harder, I need to work through this, and then they end up with heat exhaustion. A, a classic example, you get uh, start your mow mowing your lawn uh -huh. and uh, you want to finish it. <laughs> 
think if you think about it, uh, you want to get it done, but uh, but you might have to take the break. Take a break. Mm -hmm. Drink lots drink of water. Fluid. I mean, water and fluids. The sports drinks it, are really the key. In fact, I would say every 15 or 20 minutes or so, put in now uh, eight ounce down. Yeah, take it with you. I think a lot of times mm -hmm. we drink before and then we'll, I'll get some later, but mm -hmm. bring it with you. you yes, need to bring you should have it on. You mm -hmm. have the water or your supposed drink on you. Doctor, is there any time when we shouldn't exercise outside at all? Exactly. Now, not all the weather situations are conducive to exercising outdoors. In fact, we are starting to see the heat build up here in Arkansas and uh, there are going to be days when it, you got to call it quits, get indoors, get onto your treadmill or a indoor gym and get that exercise routine uh, inside rather than outside. And uh, that's where <laughs> we have our meteorologist <laughs> to look out for. Yeah, look at that. Look at the temperatures every day and the humidity levels. That's going to give you a good indication of whether or not you should be working out outdoors for sure. Good information during the heat of the summer. We are in it, folks. Here's some information for the Longevity Center at St. Vincent. If you have any questions, you can always call the number there on your screen, 501-552. 4777. Dr. Dubaka, thanks once again Thank for you. being here this morning. Stay cool out there.